So if you're looking for a video on how to bleed and or completely flush your front and rear brake system on your Harley-Davidson motorcycle, you've definitely come to the right place. This video in 4K. Hey, welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erdocker here, lawbidingbiker.com. I thank you for checking back in. And before we dive right into the instructional portion of this video, there's definitely some things you need to know about your Hardy brake system. Hardy recommends that you change your brake fluid every two years regardless of mileage and actually this is a good recommendation for all motorcycles. So you ask why change it every two years? Well you gotta understand that as brake fluid ages, its chemical properties deteriorate and it absorbs water. And because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, half the temperature of brake fluid, any water in the brake fluid dramatically reduces its boiling point. Thus, boiling converts any water in the brake fluid into gas. And because gas is more compressible than liquid, when brake fluid boils, it can cause the brake pedal or lever to feel spongy or soft, requiring the rider to have to pump it to build up pressure to slow the motorcycle. Understand it can also cause complete brake failure. Quickly, let's talk about bleeding versus flushing your system because the terms can get mixed up. When you're bleeding your system, maybe you did a project where you disconnected a brake line, somehow you introduced air into your brake system, you're gonna put new fluid over the top of your old, you're just gonna cycle it enough to get the air out of the system. Whereas flushing, that's exactly what you're doing. You're flushing your system, you're removing all the old fluid out of the reservoirs and the lines and putting new fluid in. The processes are basically exactly the same. And it doesn't matter if you have an ABS or a non-ABS brake system, when it comes to flushing or bleeding the brakes, the processes are exactly the same. Wanna save money, wrench on your own motorcycle, be part of the number one online biker community every time that subscribe button and bell icon or hit another biker joins the revolution. We'd like to have you. And flushing your brake system on your Hardy is a very inexpensive project at the cost of only brake fluid, which is really cheap. After watching this video, you'll be able to save your money. No need to pay a dealership. You'll be able to do this in your very own shop or garage with very minimal tools. And although not mandatory, I do suggest purchasing an inexpensive brake fluid moisture tester. That way at any time, you can quickly test your brake fluid for water content. If you ever do find that your brake fluid has 3.7% or higher water content by volume, it is recommended that you change it regardless if it's been two years or not. And one thing worth noting is don't store your opened unused brake fluid long term on your shelf. Problem is you opened it, you're using it on a project, just sitting on your shelf, it's gonna collect moisture. We've already talked about the problems that causes, which is why we're flushing our system in the first place. And if you appreciate this completely free tutorial video and all the videos on this channel, you can certainly support us by using the affiliate links in the description below to things like the moisture tester or the vacuum pumps we use. No additional cost to you. We do get a small kickback if you click through and make a purchase. We're just trying to help as many bikers as we can worldwide and we need your continued support to do so. And if you wanna dive in deeper on this subject matter, check out the weekly Law Abiding Biker podcast, episode 178, where we get super detailed. And with that said, let's get our hands dirty. Let's turn some wrenches, huh? All right, so the first thing is Oscar's just removing the brake reservoir cap. There's two Phillips screwdrivers. If you're ever in question about which brake fluid, what dot number to use on the top of those, it usually tells you, so you can look at that. All right, and you got both screws out. They're captured screws, so that means they're not gonna fall out on you. He's got a rag. Just be careful, you know, where we're gonna set this, a nice clean rag. We don't wanna introduce any dirt to the system. So this has been about four and a half years. It's never been replaced. You're supposed to do it every two, of course, now, per Harley. Um, but he wasn't experiencing any problems. We just thought it was time to do it. And you can see it's a real kind of honey colored. Um, color won't tell you a whole bunch, but it can turn black if your lines start breaking down inside and stuff like that. But Mostly it's about how much moisture content is in it is why we're uh, needing to replace it. All right, so you don't have to have one of these, but they are handy. Um, this is a brake system moisture tester, and he's just gonna pop the cap off of it. I'll link to it in the description below if you wanna get one. If you change your fluid every two years, you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, you'll stay ahead of it, but this is four and a half years old, so we're curious. He's gonna put the probes in, push a button, we're gonna see where his moisture level and it lit up like a Christmas tree and you can see he's at greater than 4%. We would wanna be somewhere down here at 1% or at least less than 2%. So definitely a ton of moisture in his system. So we need to get this flushed. All right, so just make sure that you have your cap in a nice clean area like we do. You don't wanna introduce any contaminants to your system. And uh, 
uh, face down like we have it, he's gonna lift it up. There's a diaphragm. Just inspect this and make sure that it's not cracked, worn. It's also your seal uh, before you put that cap back on. Um, the reason we don't wanna set it on its back, he's gonna set it face down. If we set it upside down, it can introduce some moisture up in the top of the cap and then you can have a, a little bit of a, a bleeding um, release issue around the, the seal on that. So just face down on a nice clean surface. So to make this job very easy for you, there's several different kinds of pumps. This is a Mighty Vac hand pump. You can see it has a reservoir in the middle uh, for the brake fluid. It's got the different connectors for your brake bleeder screws on your bikes, and then it's a hand pump. And we used this for years, and it still works perfect. It's a little bit cheaper than the uh, Air one, which we'll show you in a second, but I'll link to these in the description below. Get one, it'll make your life easy. And both these products are from Mighty Vac. And uh, like I said, we'll link to them in the description below if you want to get hooked up. It helps support us. No additional cost to you, but we get a small kickback if you click through and purchase. This is the pneumatic one. It is, again, by Mighty Vac and simple. You'll see it in this video. We're going to use this one. We hook it up to an airline. And again, it comes with all the different little brake adapters uh, for the screws and everything. So either one you want to do, this is uh, the one we're going to use today. So we've got our airline hooked in to our uh, Mighty Vac here. And all he's going to do at first is just vacuum the reservoir out. And he's got his valve he's going to turn on there. There he goes, he's just sucking all the fluid out. And there we go, that easy with one of these. So if we haven't told you, make sure you protect your paint. Uh, this stuff is really hard on paint, so we just threw a rag over the tank and stuff like that. We're using Amsoil. Um, you can use whatever brake fluid you want. We like the Amsoil product, and this is the uh, dot three and four is what we're using there. And you can see the next thing you want to do, we've topped off the reservoir. He's going to point at the little bars. That's kind of where you want to put it to. And you can see how much clearer that new brake fluid is compared to the honey colored that we took out. So before the next step, just make sure you top your reservoir off and make sure you're using the right brake fluid. All right, and just so you can see, we've got fresh fluid in there and you can see he's gonna test it with a moisture meter and it doesn't even register to basically 0% moisture. So you can see that's where we wanna be. All right, and so what we're doing here is uh, Oscar's down there with the Mighty Vac. He's got his 10 millimeter wrench and uh, he's gonna get his put over the bleeder valve. Make sure this is all cleaned up before you do this because you don't wanna introduce any dirt into the system, so clean it off good. He's putting the Mighty Vac over there, and he's got his 10 millimeter wrench, and he's just gonna crack this, you know, half turn, three quarters, whatever, you'll see. And he's went ahead and cracked it. Now he's gonna open up the valve on his Mighty Vac. And he's gonna start looking for the suction. And it is sucking, and I'm up here monitoring the fluid, and I see it's going down. You don't want to let this run out because you'll introduce air to your system. So I'm just keeping it topped off. And if you wonder how much to do on this, really I try to do one to two reservoirs and I'm just eyeballing it. Real quick guys, if you appreciate all these free videos and what we're trying to do to help the law-abiding biker community, there is a way you could support us. You can become a patron member, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. There'll be a link in the description below. You can pledge a certain amount per piece of content that we put out. No risk, because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits of becoming a member. There's a private Facebook group that's blowing up. There's also a uh, access to premium videos and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, all the information is over. Hit the link, check it out. All right, let's get back into your video. After it sucks one to two reservoirs, and he'll see down there that, you know, that it's not, there's not a ton of bubbles and that we have all the air. And this stuff's cheap, so I'd rather do a little bit more and know that we really flush those lines. You're only going to do it once every two years, so. And again, I'm just monitoring it, and he's just sucking it through down there. And I'll let him know when I think it's about two reservoir fulls that we've got a good flush. Okay, Oscar, that's probably good. And he's leaving the Mighty Vac on it until he tightens it down. You don't want to pop that off because you would introduce air to the system. So he'll tighten that before. Now he can go ahead and remove the, the fitting there. And there you go. We've now officially bled the right side. And uh, we did the left side first because it's the farthest away from the reservoir. There's two brake calipers on the front. Off video, we did the left side first because it's farthest away from here. Then you want to work towards the closest, which is the right side. 
Um, and then we'll just make sure this is topped off and we've officially bled uh, the front and we're gonna do the rear and it's the same process, just the reservoir's in a different spot. So with one of those pumps, that's how quick, make sure you have two people, makes it a lot easier and your system's flushed and bled. And now we can actually, um, I'm gonna top this off right here and get it right to the bars there about. And now we can slowly, um, you wanna be careful, we'll get the cap, Oscar's gonna get the cap, just because it can bubble up a little bit. And you don't really need to screw this on at this point, I'm just gonna set it on. And again, that's just so we can, because if we had to bleed more, if we had air in the system, I could pop this back up. And I'm just gonna slowly grab this lever and it might take a little bit here. And there we go. It, what, four there? And man, it is nice and tight, exactly how a brake system should feel. It's not spongy. So he's got really good front brakes. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab a screwdriver and we will, uh, Oscar's gonna come in here and tighten this down. These do have torque specs, but you don't really have to worry about it. We've done them enough, just get them tight in another quarter turn and you're gonna be fine. Don't over tighten them, you can strip them, but certainly you can look up your torque specs if that's something you're interested in. And of course, we already inspected the diaphragm and the gasket and everything, we know everything's good and nice, nice solid front brakes. If these were spongy, you still got air in the system, go back, repeat uh, to make sure that you bleed it all out. Okay, so we're just at the rear system now and on this bike, uh, yours too probably, your rear brake reservoir is right up front here uh, to the right side of the bike. And again, Phillips screwdriver. Oscar, of course, is positioned at the back. There's only one caliper on the back, so we don't have to contend with two like the front. And again, I've cleaned this all off and uh, made sure that there's not a ton of grime on it. You want to be really careful. And I'll do one more real quick just to make sure that we're not introducing any dirt into this system. Okay, so I've got that off. And again, I'm gonna take this over to the workbench and set it uh, down on a nice clean rag. Okay, and with that said, I'm gonna be up front here monitoring and uh, I'll probably come in an angle like that and be able to top this off. Oscar's at the back and he is going to go ahead. He's got his 10 millimeter wrench. So the first thing, Oscar's hooking up the Mighty Vac and I'm gonna suck this out and go ahead, Oscar. And I'm just cleaning it all up in here. Okay, I've got that all cleaned out. I'm gonna hand this back to Oscar. He's gonna start hooking up the back. Before he does that, I'm gonna to top this off. And again, we don't wanna introduce any air, so there's a little sight glass here. I can tell, of course, at the end how full it should be. There we go, Oscar's ready at the back. He's got his 10 millimeter wrench. Now he's loosening the bleeder valve. Of course, the Mighty Vac connection is on there. He's gonna open it up and start sucking fluid. I'm gonna monitor up here. I don't want this to go dry because we'll introduce air to the system. And again, I'm gonna do about two reservoirs full. And I'll let Oscar know just to make sure that we're really flushing this system. And on that Mighty Vac, you can open the valve to different uh, levels. We're at about 100 PSI on the air compressor, but he's opening the Mighty Vac just about three quarters. You can determine how fast you're sucking the fluid out. And again, just for good measure, the stuff's cheap. I'm just really making sure I might even do three reservoirs. We've got plenty. Just to really make sure that we get these lines flushed. And he should be able to see at the rear when that fluid starts getting um, clear from that honey color. How's it looking, Oscar? It's clear. So Oscar can tell in the back so he can stop at any time. We know that we pulled all the honey colored fluid out of there. And he's just tightening it off before he turns or takes his Mighty Vac off there just to make sure we don't introduce any air. His Mighty Vac's off and the bleeder valve's tight now he can Go ahead and pop that off. And I'm just gonna top the reservoir off here. Again, I'm just using the sight glass to make sure that uh, it's at the proper level. There we go. And again, I've inspected the diaphragm. It all looks good and uh, it's nice and clean. Uh, no dirt on it and all that. And I'll just go ahead and put over there, over the top. Got my screwdriver. 
And again, check your torque specs if you're worried about that. I've done enough of these. So now that I got this all tightened up, I'm gonna go ahead and pump the pedal and I'll know if we get all the air out because it's gonna be nice and tight. Yeah, and this pedal feels really good. There's definitely no air in the system. If it was spongy, I'd be worried, but um, we definitely got all the air out. Feels really good. There you go, complete system flush. About three to five minutes is what that took us on the rear. Uh, if you have two guys and the proper tools, um, yeah, front end back flush, done. Well, I hope this completely free video was useful to you. Don't forget to head over to lawabidingbiker.com. Check out everything we have to offer bikers. I hope you're well, and I definitely hope you are out there getting some riding in. Peace, I'm out.